Hey everybody, Greg here at Video Maker. Today I'm going to talk about this Canon L series 50mm f1.2 lens. And I'm here to talk about this f1.8 50mm non L series lens. Wait, if I'm holding this L series lens, what am I being shot with? That would be this lens. Well, then what are you being shot with? That would be the L series lens. I'm confused. It's simple. My shot is using that L series lens. And my shot is using that inexpensive f1.8 lens. The real question is who looks better? I think it's a bit conceited to assume that we look good with any lens. Agreed, I was referring to picture quality. Oh, well, we can let the viewers judge for themselves. Yet still, we should run some tests of our own. Well, as soon as you leave, I can get started. I see how it is. Good day to you, sir. Um, I'll need the lens. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's talk about the differences between these two lenses now. Obviously, the number one difference is the price, right? So the lower end f1.8 lens runs about $125 and the L series f1.2 lens runs about a little over $1,600. So, you know, there is a huge price gap between these two lenses. So we would expect to see a huge gap in other features, but let's talk about those. So the f1.8, the more inexpensive lens definitely feels a little bit less expensive. You know, it feels a little plasticky. It's very light. Um, it feels a little bit fragile, like if you dropped it, it might not continue working. Um, I have heard stories about these lenses um, not uh, lasting very long, uh, but I have not experienced that personally. So, you know, you know check, check online and check reviews for that type of stuff. Um, uh, conversely, the 50mm L series f1.2 feels very solid. It's definitely heavier. In fact, the uh, inexpensive lens is about 4.5 ounces and uh, this L series lens comes in at about 20.8 ounces. So quite a bit heavier, um, but you know, feels more solid, um, definitely feels tightly put together. So, you know, that those are definitely factors to consider for longevity. Now, let's talk about the minimum and maximum apertures on these guys. So this is obviously a key difference. The uh, f1.8 has that maximum aperture of f1.8. So, um, you know, this is basically one stop less than the L series, which has a f1.2. So what does this mean? Well, what this means is to get basically the same exposure on that f1.8, you're going to have to boost your ISO from 100, say, to 200. Um, so, you know, depending on what kind of camera you have, you know, boosting to 200 might not be that big of a deal. Um, but if your camera isn't that great with ISO, then it may be a noticeable difference in the noise. Now, the minimum aperture, so the, you know, the smallest it can close down, uh, the inexpensive f1.8 lens actually has an f22 minimum aperture. So that's going to be a slight advantage over the L series, which has an f16 minimum aperture. Now, that's only one stop. So essentially, you know, to get the same shot, you'd either need to, on the L series, double your shutter speed, or you could add a little bit of neutral density. So a half neutral density or a 0.3 would do the trick and give you that one stop uh, reduction in light. So, you know, this is going to be an advantage on that f1.8 for, you know, super bright outdoor shots, maybe. So just something to, to consider. And if you're a plus member and you want to know more about how neutral density and shutter speed affect your exposure and ultimately your depth of field, you can check out a great video tutorial by clicking on the link. All right, let's talk about the irises on these two cameras. The f1.8 lens has a five bladed iris and the L series lens has a eight bladed iris. Now, what is this going to affect? This is going to change the type of bokeh that these lenses produce. So let's take a look at a little bit of test footage at some various f-stops to see how this works in practice. All right, so now that you've seen the differences in the type of bokeh that these two lenses produce, let's talk about focusing. Now, first of all, the L series lens has a much bigger focus ring, so it's a lot easier to kind of get your fingers around it. Um, it moves a lot smoother, it feels a lot tighter, um, versus the f1.8 lens, you know, it's a much narrower ring and it feels a little bit loose, a little bit flimsy, so you know, it's definitely something to consider. Um, we actually did a rack focus test, so let's take a look at those two shots with a rack focus test.
So you've seen those two shots, and for the most part, we were able to rack focus on both lenses. I will say, though, that it was a lot easier to pull that move off with the L-Series lens, but definitely possible with the F1.8. So another thing about the focus is if you do use autofocus, um, the motor in the L-Series is an USM motor, so it's ultrasonic motor. It's very quiet and it's very fast. So on the F1.8 lens, not so quiet and not so fast. We actually stuck a microphone right next to these lenses as we autofocus, and this is what it sounded like. So clearly that autofocus on the L-Series lens is a lot quieter, and um, by all reports, it's also a lot faster. So if that's an issue for you, that's something to definitely consider. So one other thing to note about the autofocus on these cameras is that if you're in auto mode on the F1.8 lens, you can't go ahead and physically grab that focus ring and adjust it without basically cranking your motor, and you don't want to do that. But on the L-Series lens, even in auto mode, you can reach your hand up there, adjust that focus ring, and it's going to change your focus for you without harming anything. So just something to note on the autofocuses on these lenses. So now another important factor here is going to be image quality. Now, you know, we're no scientists here. We're not a lens rental house. We're not testing these for, like, supreme accuracy. You know, we're just trying to take them into some mostly average shooting situations to see what the difference is between the two lenses. Now you're going to read in here that the color rendition and the sharpness is better on the L-Series lens, and I'm sure that scientifically that's absolutely true, but you know, we just took two or three shots here and we just wanted to let you judge for yourself based on these shots um, whether you think the image quality is significantly different. So let's take a look at that footage. Again, I'm no scientist, but man, those shots are pretty similar. I mean, you'd have to look pretty hard to find some significant image quality difference in there. And even the colors in the shots look pretty good on, on the F1.8. So there is, however, one um, sort of significant issue here that I did find with the F1.8 lens, and that is some vignetting. So let's take a look at these test shots and you'll see what I mean. So what you're looking at here is a full screen shot of the f1.8 lens shooting a white wall that's evenly lit. So those darkenings around the edges are not really supposed to be there. Now if we switch to a full screen of the f1.2 lens, now you're going to see that that's basically pure white and there's no fall off. So let's take a look at these two shots side by side and then let's add in this waveform monitor so we can really see what's going on. So you'll see that now on the left hand side, which is our f1.8 lens, we're getting a dramatic fall off in those IRE levels that goes all the way down to even around 60. Now as we start to close that iris down, that vignetting is going to improve and let's take a look at that and just sort of cycle through and see these side by side images as we open up our f1.8 lens and our f1.2 lens as well. So after looking at the test footage, I'm sure you can see for yourself that basically from the f1.8 to around f5, in that range you're definitely going to get some vignetting on the more inexpensive f1.8 lens. Now the closer you get to f1.8, the more significant that vignetting is. So you know, if you're doing a lot of shooting at low light and you can't afford to have that vignetting on the edges, you know, that's, that lens is basically not going to be for you. While as the L-Series lens definitely held, held its own and even down at f1.2, basically, you know, no significant vignetting at all. So there you have it. These two 50 millimeter lenses with significantly different prices, both Canon lenses. So, you know, they're both the same manufacturer and everything. And, you know, so take away from this what you will. If you want to know more about buying lenses for DSLR cameras, you can check out our buyer's guide by clicking on the link. I'm Greg Olson with Videomaker. We'll see you next time.